Hey guys, it's Brian from Thunder Ridge Bison again, and we had a pretty busy weekend in the store and the freezer's looking a little empty. So we're gonna take you back over to Harrington's and finish off one of those other butchering videos just to show you how we go from our field to here to your table. So stay tuned. This is Thunder Ridge. major tools that we have here for today, uh, Jeremy and I both have much similar but slightly different knives. Uh, this one of Jeremy's is a Victorinox stiff blade, six inch curve. Mine's just a F Dick. It's a little bit shorter of a boning knife, curved blade as well with a stiff blade as well. Jeremy's got the uh, F Dick steel, as do I. Same thing, just basically different shapes about yeah. all it is. Those are primarily the major tools we're going to use today. You'll see a couple other knives. We've got some steak knives. We've got a 12 inch F Dick uh, steak knife and then a scimitar knife as well. So there's many ways to break down the hip. Uh, the most traditional way is hanging. I know that's the way that I learned. And funny enough, uh, many years ago, I got the finer, finer technique from Jeremy where we used to work together. I uh, always struggle with this a little bit. And, and Jeremy's one of the people who taught me how to do this properly. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pull off the sirloin tip right here, which is, you can kind of see the defining muscle here between the two, and the big femur bone runs right up the middle of it. So once I pull the, the sirloin tip off, I'll pass it off to Jeremy, and Jeremy's gonna bone out the rest of the hip just hanging. So just like a lot of other butchering, you've gotta follow about finding seams, and right there's the seam between the two muscles. So what I've found that seam, I'll go right down the side, the bone here. As you can hear the knife hitting the bone. I'm actually gonna score it a little. Here we go. Pull the sirloin tip muscle right off, just whole. Yeah. It did peel. It did a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Right. Anyway, the rest of the hip is uh, your outside round, your eye of the rounds right there, and then your your top round is right here. So this part here, where it all narrows together and comes into this tendon, is called the heel. And inside there's a little piece. It's just chock full of gristle. Uh, they call it the rat tail. So this piece here, a lot of guys will take this and start here and come down, but I always split it in half. It just keeps everything more stable. And uh, yeah, so we'll just get the femur bone out now. I was talking earlier, Jer, about wearing the chain mill. Absolutely. This is where you want it. This is exactly <laughs> where one of the most important places of wearing the chain mill is. Yeah, because you're working right here against you. I'm really hoping that somebody or some young kids find some inspiration out of this kind of stuff, Jared. I think Absolutely. butchering is, is really becoming a, a dying art. Uh, especially this hanging process, you know, uh, not coming out of a box. You know, there's a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people don't know how to break the big, bison, big difference. beef, you know. There's a big difference between 
a meat cutter and a butcher. Absolutely, absolutely. It's not a skilled trade anymore, right? We're yeah, using, it is. There's not too many schools in the world that even teach it. There's a few, but not a heck of a lot. And, and we've just barely scratched the surface of what can be done. Absolutely. A lot of people who are game hunters and stuff would love to have the basic knowledge and realize just how much fun it is when you, when you start doing this on your own. So I know that Jeremy and I uh, first started butchering together a lot of years ago. We were at a local place that isn't operational anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, we both started doing this right at the very beginning. And we both yeah. started actually uh, the processing end of it all. We both worked yeah. on the kill floor. Oh, yeah. uh, I was only there for about seven or eight years, I think, at a couple of different places. But I know you spent a bit yeah, more time Yeah, I spent there. a long time, long time on the slaughter floor. Yeah. Um, it seems to... You learn a lot more when you can go start and finish for sure. Like it's, uh, you know why you're doing the things you're doing when you know the next step. I always tell people, I often tell people that, uh, but there's a lot of things from chasing them into a stick to carrying them out in a box. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of different aspects of it all. And it's just like anything else that you do. If you're gonna do one thing, do it really, really well. Yeah. Um, I know that we both spend our time right from the beginning right to the very end. I haven't killed in a number of years now. Um, I still have a crazy utmost respect to the people that do it. Absolutely, it's not an easy job. It's not an easy job at all necessary, but people who do it properly, people who do it humanely, people yeah. who do it ethically, um, yeah. it's, it's a, a necessary step, but 90%, like this, this bison, for example, it had a really good life. It had a really Absolutely. good life. It had Absolutely. one bad morning. <laughs> had one bad morning. Bad morning. Out of a couple uh, of years. So uh, a lot of people need to understand that the, the people, the non-meat eating people of the world, hey, like I employ one, one person who is uh, a non-meat eater. I have the utmost respect for her because she chooses not to, she chooses not to preach on me about why she doesn't. Absolutely. Um, we have a mutual agreement. We get along extremely well. Mm -hmm. um, so she also has an appreciation for the fact that we're, like I said, have respect for what we're doing and respect for the animal. She actually has a respect, more of a respect for the job. Okay, so Jeremy's gonna pull apart the, uh, the hip here. He's gonna take the inside round off of the hip just by following the seams in between the two, the two major muscles. The inside round, I believe, is the largest solid muscle in the whole animal. Yeah. And can be used as a round steak or a roast. Mm -hmm. Would those be a pretty tough roast though? It's, a, it's one of those ones that requires love. It, yeah. it, 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 tough, yes, if it's not done properly, 100%. It's nice and lean. If you do a Swiss steak, kind of like your Chuck Short Ribs, if it's done right, yeah. big, right. big yeah. time awesome. We do get people in asking for the eye of the rounds. And to me, it just seems like such a tough cut, but they like it. It yeah. slices up nice for sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's more of an ease of cooking, or lack of experience that would back so, ask, somebody would ask for that one. When Jeremy was working earlier, he was talking about the heel. This is the heel. And then in the center of it has this one muscle right here, the rat tail, <laughs> affectionately referred to as. Right yeah, the other half of it's right here, right in the middle of it all right there. So. The name like rat tail, that goes right into ground. Yeah. So now Jeremy's going to pull off that inside, uh, sorry, the eye of the round. And like you were saying, Brian, the people come in and ask for that and they want to make nice sandwich meat out of it. I think that if you had a slicer at home, yeah, yeah, you could probably do a really nice roast out of that and then slice it really nice and thin to make your own uh, deli meat at home. Yeah. You know, we, we like to save it because we, you know, we like to throw stuff on the Traeger and make jerky out of it. And it's beautiful. To me, that's the best cup. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. I think if you were to do something like that, you, you'd give that on the Traeger a couple hours and then wrap it up. 
yeah. and let it sit there in its own juices and marinate in its own beautifulness as it's going along here. Mm -hmm. So we're moving to the outside flat or the outside round. Jeremy's taking off a big piece of fat on the outside and right in the middle of that big piece of fat there's a big giant gland. Mm -hmm. oh. Ooh, <laughs> yummy. Those always come out. Always, always, always oh. throw those out. They're, they're little filters throughout the whole animal and they all, they all have to come off. So, so that inside and outside round, they're pretty good for jerky as well? Yeah, All yeah. Sending that away to have that made into jerky would be just absolutely perfect. It's really nice and lean and it, it uh, would dehydrate beautifully if you get that good yeah, flavor on no it. Yeah, fat whatsoever in this meat. Yeah, the marble is minimal in this animal to begin with. So. And again, that's, you know, I, I love the fact that people are coming in because they're doing more things, they're cooking for themselves, they're trying different things, and they'll come in and ask for that just for that reason. They want to make jerky or yeah. they want to... Exactly. Yeah, maybe exactly. at some point we'll do a jerky video. So down the side of this outside flat here, there's a big heavy piece of silver skin. And that's just a good example. Between those two muscles, the very definition of butchering is, is separating the muscles. So Jerry's going to just take that piece of silver skin off there and, and just uh, tidy that piece up a little bit. So all we're going to do with this, the rest of this hip, is we're just going to clean this up. Uh, makes it, it make a awesome jerky out of it, like you said, a bit of stew, maybe a couple of nice roasts. And for the most part, that's pretty much the whole animal, isn't it, Jeremy? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to keep this shank for also buco. Oh, yes, okay. So also buco, uh, shanks there, the hind shank steak. Jeremy's just going to remove some of the tendon there, the Achilles heel, the end of the rat tail, and then yeah, it can be s sliced up nicely on the bandsaw, bone in makes an amazing also buco which you can do as a steak a simmering steak something else you'd yeah. want to cook low and slow low and slow Simmer yeah the sugar. exactly yeah. yeah uh i have had also buco done with tomato and i find out that acid build beautifully yes. cooks it down nice uh, a lot of people use it for soup too Absolutely brown it up really soup, good yeah. throw it in a pot and make some soup out of it it's, re it's sure. really really good so as you can see here with the inside round I'm just going to go around the side of this and remove the cap. So kind of like the top sirloin that we did earlier, there's a separate muscle on the cap. And just going in between the two muscles, following that seam around. There you go. So the neat thing about this piece here is this, that is solid, solid muscle. We'll just remove a little bit of the dark stuff on the outside. Normally don't like removing the fat, but we can't have that on there for, for our jerky, so we'll take that off. And just a little bit of the silver skin on the outside. So we'll slice that all up uh, for another day. Hey guys, thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe to follow along with the rest of our farm journey. And check out the link below to see the rest of the Farm to Table series.